Hola. <risa> Buenos días. <risa> simple pleasures of traveling, sorry I won't take a bite right now, um, is just going to the town square, grabbing you know, something really quick to eat on the street. Uh, my preferred food, as you can tell, here in Colombia are uh, empanadas. And it gives you a chance to practice your Spanish as well, or whatever local language that, um, you know, wherever you're at. And uh, today, I ordered two uh, arepas with beef, arepas uh, de carne, and quickly realized that I wanted empanadas, not arepas. So that made for a rather comical situation as all the uh, locals laughed at me. Um, but it was in good good nature. They smiled at me. I said, lo siento, and uh, we, we had fun with it. And it just gives you another opportunity to connect with locals, um, and in particular, support local businesses, always important. Um, so just grab some local food, try out your, uh, your language skills, your newly acquired language skills, in my case, and go enjoy uh, an empanada, an arepa, whatever you want. Hola. Buenos dias. Um, and just enjoy uh, some local food and beautiful surroundings in whatever country you're in. In my case, Colombia, and we're eating empanadas until we can't eat empanadas anymore. Now, one of the number one things I would recommend doing when traveling, not just in Bogota, but really anywhere, is book a walking tour for your first day. Walking tours allow you to really get the lay of the land and understand what is around you so you can attack your travel plans most efficiently. Equally as importantly, walking tours allow you to learn about the history of whatever city and country you're visiting, usually from the perspective of a local, which will be so enriching for your overall travel experience. Now in Bogota, we joined a free walking tour provided by Beyond Colombia. The tour focused mostly on La Candelaria and lasted three hours. Now the tour is free, but be sure to tip these hardworking guides as at the end, uh, the tips are their source of income on these tours. On our Beyond Colombia tour, we picked up a ton of Colombian and South American history, sampled chicha, which is a local homemade maize-based alcohol, which is actually illegal to mass produce, and witnessed some dueling restaurant tours as well. Plaza de Bolivar de Bogota. A plaza has been dedicated to Simon Bolivar. He is a Venezuelan independence leader. You may have heard of him. He also served as the leader of all five of these countries, Colombia, Venezuela, Ecuador, Peru, as well as Bolivia. And they've named this square after him, in honor of him. Yeah. Um, obviously in this part of South America, he's an incredibly important figure. He led the independence movement for all five of those countries against the Spanish. And today, you can come enjoy this plaza, and you can see live performances, as you can see behind me. Um, big celebrations of Colombian independence, which came in 1810, July 20th, 1810. And just a lot of celebratory music going on. You can buy a lot of uh, different items, handmade crafts, things like that. But just generally a great place for Colombians and people visiting to gather and celebrate life. Live performances seen here take place in front of the Palacio de Baño, Bogota's city hall. While the Palace of Justice is located here on the northern side of the square, the National Capitol building, which houses both chambers of Colombia's Congress, is located on the southern side, and the Metropolitan Cathedral Basilica of the Immaculate Conception, which has actually been built and rebuilt four times on this site since 1556, is here on the eastern side. 
A short walk down the colorful Bogota streets from Simon Bolivar's plaza is this window from which Bolivar escaped assassination. Bathing in the Palacio de San Carlos, then president of Great Colombia, Bolivar was tipped off by his mistress, who actually gained the nickname the Liberator of the Liberator after Bolivar's own nickname from this event. Bolivar escaped naked and still covered in soap from his bath. The Palacio de San Carlos today serves as Colombia's foreign ministry. No trip to Bogota is complete without stops at both the Gold and Botero art museums. El Museo del Oro hosts the largest collection of gold artifacts in the world, including pieces that form the basis of the myth of El Dorado. In addition, this museum does a great job of paying homage to the indigenous communities of this part of the world and their brilliance when it came to their detail and perfecting of metalwork. And who could forget Colombia's own Fernando Botero, famous for depicting people in large and exaggerated volumes, and yeah, yeah, his paintings are now famous memes too. After perusing the museums, it's time to enjoy some street performances on Carrera Ocho as we head to La Puerta Falsa for some Colombian cuisine with our beautiful travel partner. One of the coolest aspects of Bogota is its rich history of graffiti. Now, graffiti has only recently been legalized in the city, um, but it's prominent everywhere. And you can see it throughout the city, particularly in La Candelaria. But when it's combined with football pitches and some of these urban football pitches, like you see here, it makes for a really cool spot to take photos or just hang out and have an empanada like I would probably do. Um, but there are a lot of really cool urban spaces here in Bogota, whether it's football or skating, BMX, that type of stuff that you can see behind me. Um, they really spruce it up by adding some graffiti and some artistic flair to this city. Here we are uh, at the top of Monserrate in Bogota. It is a mountain that is visible from really any point in the city. Almost so, the world, you would say. Almost the world, one would say. Or maybe I did say that just before this. You can really see the mountain from anywhere in the world. Uh, <laughs> um, but it's really great because it provides beautiful views of the city, but it also has a church on top and as it is late November a little bit of a nativity situation going on there it looks like um, but a rather uh, rather tenuous trip up here uh, we've been walking in the rain for like an hour 
uh, because after we had a really wonderful lunch, I thought that it'd be best to just forge ahead and really go for it. And because, uh, you we know, went for it. everyone tells you that, you know, the rain lasts about 10, 15 minutes. Well, we proceeded to trudge through it for about 45 minutes, taking stops here and there. Tried to find an ATM because we thought we had to pay cash to get the cable car up here, which is fantastic. Um, we didn't. Uh, through my broken Spanish, we managed to find out that you could in fact use a card to get the cable car up here. And um, so now we made it, but we are sopping wet. But the one nice thing is the lines were non-existent. So we heard a lot about how sometimes you could wait an hour, maybe even two hours in line, obviously because locals take it, but also tourists take the cable car up here as well. Um, but we didn't have any wait at all. Um, also, you can actually take a walk up here which usually takes about an hour whereas the cable cars take five minutes um, and the great thing about um, Montserrat is there's a long history um, even before uh, you know but the pre-Columbian history of it it's always been a pilgrimage site where people um, in the surrounding area would come and climb the mountain um, as sort of a um, an ode or a uh, you know, acknowledgement of, of God, and um, so they would make that that trek, that one-hour trek nowadays, be in the nice pavement uh, of the mountain. But um, to this day, it remains a, a really important place for um, people to make the pilgrimage to the top, and it's also a really great tourist spot. And it has become really the most well-known tourist activity here in Bogota is to come to the top of Montserrat, and I can see why. So you can see every inch of the city, and it is brilliant. Uh, once you get to the top, it's about 10,300 feet. Um, 3,200 meters, that is. 3,200 meters, there we go. We have a metric, a metric system conversion. Thank you, Aaron, you're the best. Um, so yeah, 10,300 feet. And uh, the cable car ascends really rapidly, so it's, uh, it's really, it's a, it's a sight to behold for sure. So there is Bogota as far as the eye can see and um, it's an incredible view. You can see the cable car going down behind me and uh, like I said there's quite a few nativity type things around so it makes for a really pretty holiday um, take on Montserrat. But definitely a must do when you are in Bogota, Colombia. <laughs> 